welcome back to the Creating Wealth and Wellness podcast. I am Tara Misseldine, and I co-host this show with Amanda Kingsley, and we team up to take you on a journey every week, one where freedom is cultivated through personal development, where women connect to fuel their futures, and where wealth is created as a byproduct of being well. And every single week, we talk about our lives and how they are affected by one of those things, or vice versa. So, Amanda, hello. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Today, we are actually going to talk about um, a requested episode that one of our listeners on the Facebook page asked for. And to be fair, it was many moons ago that she asked for this. (laughs) Um, But she wanted us to talk about teaching gratitude to our children. So I think that this, you know, is another fantastic parenting topic. uh, But it also says a lot about who we are as women and how we show up in the world. Um, so before we get to that, I think it's a very key segue to share our gratitudes. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead. Do you want to share first? Okay, let's see. Well, my gratitude opened up a can of worms last week. If everybody, if you haven't heard that episode <laughs> about the color blush and how much I love it, <laughs> but it spurred quite the conversation with Amanda and I. So if you haven't heard that yet, jump back over to last week's episode and give it a listen. Tell us what you think. Um, <clears throat> let's see. This week, I am grateful for birds. Hmm. I love birds, all kind of birds. We raised chickens. We had hawks kill our chickens. We have robins and sparrows and swallows and all sorts of flying friends that happen around our yard. And I love waking up to the sound of birds and bird song. Mm. Um, And since that actually hasn't been happening for a while, because it's winter here in New England, I have an awesome app. And I guess I'm going to actually save that app for a future gratitude because I do love it, but it has the sound of birds in it. Okay, there we go. Birds. (laughs) <laughs> I, I've been saying to my kids, do you hear it? The birds sound different. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, the spring. You can hear the birds. <laughs> it's coming. The birds are different. <laughs> they're like, okay, mom. <laughs> no, really, you'll notice it. Someday you'll care about that. <laughs> so I will just agree with you that I have been too noticing this sound of the spring birds. Oh, I really yay. love that. Cool. Know? I love when we come together like that. All right. I'm grateful for that too, Amanda. I'm grateful for the connections that you give me. That was my kisses. Did you hear them? (laughs) Okay. So today we are going to be talking about teaching our kids gratitude. Um, And I guess we could look at this. We could come at it from lots of different directions because it could be teaching our kids gratitude, teaching our kids to be grateful for something or sharing gratitude with our children. So what, how do you feel compelled to start off? Yeah, I feel like we did an episode at some point that, that talked about gratitude. And as we know, there's so many gazillion layers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think when we mentioned kids, like for me, the biggest thing is modeling, remembering Mm -hmm. to model. So I have a lot of gratitude. I think grateful <clears throat> thoughts. I think thankful thoughts. They are what shape my reality in so many ways. But in parenting, I have to be more aware to say them out loud and not just think them. Mm-hmm. So it's not a step that, fe- so like sometimes it's a step that feels almost unnatural. But it, I have to remind myself as a parent, unless I say it, they can't read my thoughts. Yeah. So even though, even though they're feeling the energy of my gratitude, um, it is important, I think, to say out loud, like, what a beautiful day we're having, or look at this amazing food we have on our table. Or So even though it feels a little, un, like it's not something, I don't know, I guess for me, it doesn't feel unnatural because it's not true. It's just normally something I would think and not say out loud. Mm -hmm. Um, So in parenting, I remind myself to say out loud. Yeah, that's that's a great point. Um, That sort of reminds me of a previous episode where you talked about the value of simplifying your lessons for your children. Yeah. Um, And like our kids don't necessarily read our minds and they need to hear when we're grateful for something. So I love that point. Yeah. So um, something that is coming up for me as I think about this is the, the huge difference in this topic of 
teaching your child to act grateful Mm -hmm. or teaching your child to experience gratitude. Yeah. (laughs) So like I, I do find myself many times saying like, oh, well, what do you say, Aria? You know, like when somebody does something nice for her Mm -hmm. or sort of coaching her to like, to show gratitude. And I think it's so much more important to guide her in like experiencing gratitude. Right. You're like, what does that, how does that show up for a three or four year old? It might not show up the same way like that, but sort of like kind of coaching that out of her. I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the difference I between like showing it. it and feeling it? Totally. Like yesterday <clears throat> we were at a birthday party and like it, all the kids left the birdie, birthday party and they went up to the adults and they said, thank you. And um, it's beautiful. It's great. But it was very much a coached experience, um, mm-hmm. which maybe is a reason to bring, I'm terrible about thank you cards, but one of the nice things about thank you cards is that you can go home, reflect on your favorite piece of something. Like I, instead of like, thanks for the gift. Like I love playing with this new toy with my friends. Mm-hmm. And so you're, you're having like you're sharing the experience of gratitude versus just saying the words like because yeah. you got a gift or because you went to a great party. Um, yeah. So like yeah. when we talk about teaching our kids gratitude, it's not necessarily like it's not the same as teaching them good manners. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. right, <laughs> good right. manners is to say thank you when someone does something nice for you or gives mm-hmm. you a gift or something like that. Um, and I guess the, the difference for me is like true gratitude lies in not receiving a whole bunch of gifts and then saying, okay, I want more gifts. Like that's not living into gratitude (laughs) for for those gifts. Um, And that's something that I'm struggling with now is my daughter just turned four um, and she's an only child. And I know that's an, it's a very different dynamic when you're constantly showered with everything you could possibly want. And then some by all of the people and adults in your life. And you have basically no competition for all of the all the goods, you know, all the goods, all the attention, all the accolade. Um, And I do wonder, like, this is definitely a topic where I have a lot to say. I'm not sure that I confidently know how to teach my daughter gratitude besides modeling for her being grateful for what I have. Yeah. And just talking about it is making me go, oh, I should, or, oh, I could, or, oh, I'm going to remember (laughs) to. Because it is, it is something that I don't, I don't consciously like bring into my parenting as much Mm. as I'd like to. So just having this discussion is a good reminder too. Which is so funny because gratitude is such an important part of our lives. And if you really think about it, you probably discovered it as an adult. Like I know I did. I know I discovered the practice and the power of gratitude well into my adulthood, not as a child. And so, a lot of when you discover it is based on lessons about like the law of attraction. <laughs> right. So even when we learn it as an adult, we're often learning it based on this idea that we will create a better life for ourselves, which is true. Right. But that's that. And that's treating gratitude sort of as a tool, right? It's like gratitude is now a means to an end, but I don't like consciously, I don't think that we believe that. It's so interesting. But that's how so many of us develop a practice around gratitude. Which maybe is okay. I mean, if, yeah, I'm not judging it or anything. It's just interesting. Yeah, if you get, one thing about gratitude, I know in like gratitude journaling, Mm -hmm. um, which oftentimes is presented as, you know, you want to improve the quality of your life, improve the quality of your experience of gratitude. (laughs) So um, a lot of times people will mention gratitude journaling, which I, which my favorite way to gratitude journal is to pick one thing and write like, three to five sentences about it. Like I'm grateful for the birds because mm-hmm. it, when I hear the birds, I feel yeah. life without birds would be life with birds is. And so instead of just listing like my health, my family, my um, job, my healthy food, cause that just gets mundane and boring and you're not really feeling the gratitude. Mm -hmm. Um, when gratitude journaling, I always recommend that people 
feel into one thing instead of listing 10. Yeah, that's actually a great point to feel into gratitude rather than have gratitude. Yeah. So it's kind of a state of being more than it is yeah. like a destination. Mm. <clears throat> cool. Um, it, but yeah, how do we, and it gets very different talking to a four-year-old about gratitude than it does a 13-year-old. Um, because developmentally, and when we're parenting kids, they're going through so many different mm -hmm. stages of mental processing um, and experiencing the world. And sometimes, you know, they'll do things at any age where you're like so proud and feeling like I'm nailing this. My kid <laughs> totally understands gratitude. And then other times you're like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> And in reality, it's never actually about us in those ways. Exactly. But it is totally, I mean, in some ways it is. I, I don't agree that it's never about us because it, if we're not doing the modeling or if we are always looking and asking for more ourselves, then. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Us, yeah. And, but they're entitled to have moments where they yeah, revert exactly. to other stages of being. Just and as we that are. moment is not our failure; it's exactly. their choice. <laughs> okay, Ego that, says, that's cool. "What did I do right or wrong?" But the reality is, it's just the human experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's their journey. It's yeah. their, they have a right to every bit of it, every every passage. Um, okay, so one one thing that I do with because I I guess another great place to take this conversation with is like, what are the concrete rubber meets the road things that we actually do yeah. with our children to help teach them gratitude? Yeah. Um, and one of the things that Aria and I were doing for a little while, um, while she was still three, this was maybe six months ago, and this was when I was in an extremely gratitude-focused part of my journey. So um, I, I would even venture to say that I did it more for myself than I did for her in that moment. Um, but as part of our snuggling routine at night, I would ask her, you know, like, what were the things that you loved about today? Yeah. And at the time it started because I wasn't with her a lot and I wanted to hear about her day. So I started saying, like, what did you love about today? And it seemed like an easy thing for her to process rather than like, oh, what were you grateful for today? Because that word didn't mean anything to her. Totally. Um, <clears throat> but what did you love about today? And she was listing things that, like, she was grateful for right? Um, in, in the way that she could. And it did become a beautiful little ritual that she liked to do. And we have since let it go, but I'm thinking maybe I should try to bring it back, mm -hmm. especially now that she has even more processing skills. You know, six months in the world of a three-year-old makes a big, big Huge. difference for verbalizing. Um, and also she's coming off the heels of the holidays and then her birthday and all of this other, these times when it's become obvious to me that she has maybe an overabundance you know yeah. because of some of those things like oh I want more and I want a toy today and I want to go shopping for something and you know which that triggers me you know and I think we can ask our kids like what you know what what relationships you know what experiences did you have today with other kids that were your favorite what mm -hmm. what Toy favorite. That's a good word for a four-year-old. Yeah, favorite's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, but we can ask if they, if you ask, like, what was your favorite part of the day, and they spout out all the things they played with that they have. You can mm -hmm. say, "Awesome," validate that, and then like, what was your who was who did you get to play with today that was the most fun, or something mm -hmm. like that, something that yeah. that triggers them to think about their relationships versus their, or their, um, you know, or their nutrition or whatever it is that you want to step outside of the things and the stuff. Because mm -hmm. kids often go right to the stuff because it's easy for them to explain. It's easy for them to find words for. Mm -hmm. Even I'm having a hard time finding the words mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is interesting because I, like, that's why it's such a, powerful practice for people I think the practice of gratitude is because it's not necessarily the the default place yeah where all of our minds go that's why mm -hmm. it makes such a transformative difference when you start doing it more intentionally um yeah so 
cool. What do you what do you do with some of your older kids? So the, for the listeners out there that have older children, besides just modeling them, because I know that you stand in gratitude a lot. Yeah, yeah, we don't have practices so much like a gratitude jar where we put, I've tried, I've tried mm-hmm. things like that and they always get rejected. And so <laughs> <laughs> um, some of my favorite times to introduce conversations like this are driving in the car because with mm-hmm. older kids, driving becomes a really good opportunity to, to have conversations. So yeah. driving in the car um, before bed before bed is usually an opportunity where we can have deeper conversations, dinner, dinner table. If people aren't eating dinner at the dinner table, it's such an opportunity, not only to be grateful to be together and to be healthy and to be eating food, um, but to have those conversations. Um, So I know there's some people who who will have like a gratitude tree at their table or a gratitude jar. What is a gratitude tree? Like a little tree where you write notes and, like um uh close pin them to the branches of the tree or something like that like a visual like almost like a gratitude sculpture <laughs> Ooh, i'm gonna have to look that up i yeah, like that super cute and you could do it with anything um you could have like a, a clothesline on your wall where you close pin grat- thoughts of gratitude a lot of times this stuff comes up around thanksgiving yeah, yes, exactly. Oh, then, you're right. I've seen yeah. like thankful tree kind yeah. of Yeah. And then people things. will stick to it for mm-hmm. which is is awesome. Um I think it'd be really fun to have uh and again, I'm just saying ideas that come to mind not necessarily that we do cuz they often get rejected in my house, but that could be the way that I'm presenting them. Um I think it would be really fun to have a wall in your house where the kids are allowed to write gratitude on, you know, mm-hmm. cause it, yeah. We, Ooh, like a chalkboard wall or something. Yeah. Like that. Oh, there you go. Chalkboard wall. <laughs> um, or like, you know, when, when you'll have a, um, a doorway where you measure the kids heights, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Like where there's this one piece of woodwork that you write your gratitude on or, um, as a parent, I think post-it notes, a really fun way to bring in Mm. gratitude um, either in lunches or just on mirrors or drawers or the refrigerator. Um, Sometimes written word. And I find that in today's day and age, even texting Mm -hmm. (laughs) written word is super powerful. Sometimes you don't need to have a conversation about it with your kids, but more to just put a post-it note on the faucet where you get your clean water that, that says like, you know, something to the effect of how grateful you are, or how thankful you are for mm-hmm. that clean water or the healthy food in the fridge or whatever it is. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of uh, sort of the conversations and modeling and, and whatnot, I'm, we are both lucky enough to be, to have full-time partners slash lovers slash co-parents. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I have to thank my husband for modeling this really well. I think a lot of times we sort of take for granted those closest to us in terms of like that showing of appreciation. And David is really good at modeling that for Aria. So like when Mm. we sit down to dinner at the table every night with a meal that nine times out of 10 I've prepared, um, he's really great at saying, thank you, mommy. This meal looks delicious. This, yeah. this tastes wonderful. Thanks so much for making us dinner, mommy. And like right. totally models that for her. And it's, it's part of the routine of, you know, like sh- her showing appreciation for that because she sees him doing it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so for people listening, I would, I would say be very conscious of making sure that you are sharing that display of gratitude as much as possible, even for the mundane Um, things that many of us take for granted, which usually happens to, you know, our partners and other members of the family and and things like that, that obviously it's expected that I make dinner, (laughs) you know? Or or the other way, like a lot of times, whoever is the so-called breadwinner of the family, or um, sometimes I will consciously try to bring attention to being grateful that we have a car we can drive in because Mm -hmm. daddy has a solid job that allowed us to purchase a minivan, you know, that definitely, um, because it's really easy for our kids to forget that we actually work 
Mm -hmm. to be able to have the things we have in our life. Um, Absolutely. Most of us do. <laughs> and adding to that, <clears throat> um, just this morning, Aria and I were cuddling on the couch and David got up early because Mondays he leaves early for his work, his yeah. jobs. Um, and she was like sort of resentful that he was leaving and it was a moment where I did get to say like, oh, daddy, you know, like daddy goes to work on these mornings and he goes early so that he can help take care of us and like keep castle over our heads and all, all this stuff. Um, and her first reaction was like, oh, daddy's leaving again. I wish he would just stay. Why won't he just stay? And she was like being resentful of him leaving. Um, and we did get to like kind of transform that moment into gratitude. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that it like children do not necessarily appreciate that on their own. <laughs> You know, and we they don't experience either. it very differently than we do. It's yeah. really easy for me to forget why he goes to work. Yeah. Because the mortgage is paid on automatic pay and the electric mm -hmm. bill is paid on automatic pay. And mm -hmm. um, so just bringing that awareness to our kids is good for us too. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And just like so many things in the, in the world of parenting, it comes back to modeling so hard, you know, yeah. like we, we can't expect our children to be better at this than we are. Yeah, and I know my four-year-old is super feisty. Like, what was the favorite part of your day? And he'll say, nothing. I hate everything. <laughs> oh, I hate everyone. And I don't let that, although sometimes it drives me nuts, I don't <laughs> let it eat me because I know that in the big picture, we are modeling for him mm -hmm. a life that's very different than his stubborn answers. <laughs> So um, uh, it's not the modeling to fall back into that, to remind yourself, like I'm teaching the lessons by living the life, even if the words out of his mouth are nobody, nothing. <laughs> it was boring. <laughs> oh, I love that. I'm teaching the lessons by living the life. Yeah. All right. Well, that brings us through another episode and um, into our asks. Do you have yeah. a, sorry, ringing what? phone. I'm surprised that doesn't happen more often. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I never even look at mine. I put mine on Do Not Disturb. When we well, recording. this is my house phone, which almost never <clears throat> rings. It's usually, my cell phone is off the ringer, but mm -hmm. probably. Okay, so let's see. Our asks. Um, I I have one that I was going to uh, bring up a minute ago, and I'm just going to make it my ask instead. And that is for all those people out there raising four-year-olds or recent four-year-olds are they all this feisty because <laughs> <they, laughs> the feisty fours is definitely what i'm experiencing she is a firecracker and everything is so intense and it's fantastic great and crazy not great <laughs> so for all those other four-year-old parents out there share your stories and how you get through it or any questions that you might have too. Cause Amanda and I both happen to have four-year-olds at the moment. So I'm sure that anything you're struggling with or thinking about, we are too. So please share those in the, in the Facebook group. Did you just make that up feisty fours or I did. Well, because yeah. you said feisty and I'm like, that's totally the word yeah, that describes so her. True. I'm yeah. wondering if they're all that way or if it's yeah. just our kids. Can't and be. on the other end of the fours, I think gratitude in teenagers is maybe one of the hardest ages to, to mm -hmm. <laughs> navigate. Um, so if anyone has tips about gratitude and teenagers, mm. those are appreciated. Okay. All right. Well, until next week, my friend and all of my friends. <laughs> <laughs>